Addiction is a thief. It steals your loved one, your resources. It steals your memories and your family history. Addiction is painful. Addiction's personal to me. I live with an addict. When my son was born, he was the most beautiful thing I had ever seen. When I looked in his eyes, I thought I could see God. But life was unpleasant. And he started using drugs at 14, and he became an addict. According to government statistics, approximately 23.5 million people struggle with addiction to alcohol or drugs. That's roughly one in 10 Americans in this country. That's equal to the entire population of the state of Texas. And the U.S. Surgeon General puts that number at one in seven. Addictions devastated my family. We have family members that have been in a treatment facilities multiple times. We have family that's in a treatment center right now. We have family that have died from an overdose. Addiction is a predisposition in our family. And according to the American Psychological Association, 50% of cases are genetic. Addiction has a link 50% of the time to genetics. If you're the child of an addict, you are eight times more likely to become an addict. If just one person in your family struggles with alcoholism, you're more likely to become addicted to drugs like cocaine and heroin and opioids. And if you have the predisposition for one addiction, you're predisposed to all addictions, including painkillers, tranquilizers, eating disorders. Life's not fair. In 2017, Vox Magazine did a survey and discovered that addiction has another connection, and that is poor coping skills. So the other half of that addiction, the 50% genetics, 50% is poor coping skills. Individuals who suffer from stress and inability to deal with painful emotions often try to mask that pain, which triggers addiction and alcohol and drug abuse. The survey continued to describe drug use in this country as epidemic. Over half of all Americans have a personal experience with addiction. They have someone either past or present or in their family that's struggled with addiction. And in the survey, 15.1 million Americans reported struggle with alcoholism. We fought a war on drugs in this country. Sadly, we're not winning. For me, it's a personal struggle. Alcoholism is a devastating problem. In our country, according to the U.S. Center for Disease Control, 88,000 people die every year from alcohol-related accidents, illnesses, and treatment. And of those, that's the most preventable form of accidents and disease and death in our country. It's second only to tobacco use and a poor lifestyle and a bad diet. In addition to that, those who are um, put into treatment for alcoholism have a lower life expectancy. And that's kind of frightening. For men, that is 47 to 53. For women, that number is 50 to 58. Those who struggle with alcoholism die 24 to 28 years earlier than their counterparts in the general population. Alcoholism isn't our only problem. We have other problems as well. Tragically, the fastest growing cause of death is opioids. In this country, opioids has reached another epidemic level for us. Now, we are, as a country, only 5% of the global population, but we consume 80% of the opioids that are produced for prescriptions. In this country, opioids are used to treat pain. 
And pain is treated with different medications more commonly in our country than others. But what happens with opioids is they give you a sense of well-being. And that well-being is addictive. Unfortunately, patients who are prescribed opioids develop this tolerance for the drug. And it takes increasingly high dosages to get the same results. Overdoses result in death from cardiac arrest, from respiratory arrest. In this country, 20 to 30 percent of the people who are prescribed opioids go on to misuse them. Every day in this country, 130 people die from opioid overdoses. 70,000 people died in 2017. Opioids is a raging epidemic in this country. My experience with addiction as a parent has been devastating. My son started using drugs when he was 14 and he became an addict. I have struggled my entire life, it feels like, watching the nightmare and my son has been in and out of the prison system multiple times. And during incarceration, he would get treatment for his addiction. And when he would exit the prison system, he's bright-eyed and excited about life. And he's determined, this time, I'm going to live a drug-free life. I will never look back. And he's excited, and he gets an entry-level job, and he works really hard at that. And his first thing that he buys with his money, big screen TV and a gaming system. He's an avid gamer and a movie buff, and he loves animals, and he has the most tender heart you've ever seen. And three months go by, and he's engaged in life, and he's working it hard, and he's committed. And six months? old triggers and boredom and old friends and old haunts suck him back in. And the first thing that I see is the TV's gone and the game system's gone. And in their place are little white pawn slips sitting beside little plastic bags with drug residue. And I get text messages from his phone that say things like, help me. I'm scared. Can you come get me? I don't know where I am. As a parent, one of the most difficult things I've had to do is to fight against addiction. I know I'm not the only one who has to deal with this, and I know I'm not the only one that stands by their child's door before they go to work and listens to make sure they're still breathing. I know I'm not the only one that believes we can beat addiction in this country. So here's what troubles me. We do not treat addiction like a disease. We treat it like a crime. If you have heart disease or diabetes or any other type of ailment, you go to the doctor, you get medicine, you get treatment. And when you go home, you get follow-ups, and your insurance covers it. Addiction is an untreated disease. Here's another thing that troubles me. Only 11% of the people who have addiction problems ever receive treatment. We're talking about a treatment gap of 20 million Americans. Here's another thing that troubles me. The culprit in the lack of treatment is cost and insurance. Now, I'm familiar with treatment centers and they have a difficult job. The fastest way to get treatment for addiction is to self-refer yourself and to pay out of pocket. But it's expensive. Who can afford that? You can be denied treatment because you don't have insurance. You can be denied treatment because you do have insurance. You can be denied treatment because you have the wrong addiction. You can be denied treatment because you haven't been using long enough. 
difficulties in being treated are staggering. Here's another thing that troubles me. Two-thirds of those who receive treatment for addiction receive it in the criminal justice system. Currently, we have 80% of our prison system incarcerations are also struggling with drug substance abuse. And of those, 60% of them, once they're released, will return for another round of incarcerations. And startling, the yearly cost, according to the U.S. Surgeon General, is $442 billion every year in this country. So here's the lessons that I've learned. The first lesson that I've learned is that you are not alone. Half of America is dealing with addiction. You do not have to hide. I would suggest a self-help group. And the starting point, step one, a Google search. What to do if my adult friend has an addiction problem will get you started. And the second lesson for me is to seek treatment. Knock on every single treatment door, look at every single resource in your community, and never stop searching. Be a well-informed advocate. Some places get it right better than others, and I'm going to tell you about a little town that's called Little Falls, and it's in Minnesota, and they're actually making some progress with the war against opioid overdoses. And that little town, they have spent $1.4 million dollars and state grants to make major overrides to their healthcare system. Things like limiting the prescription refills, giving access to prescription drugs to help addicts wean off of drugs, and helping addicts find treatment rather than jail. The town's only 8,000. And in that 8,626 people have weaned off of opioids and drugs. Next, teach coping skills. If half of the equation for abuse and drug addiction is about how we cope with things, we can teach that every day at home. We're teaching that to the next generation, to this generation, to those who will next face addiction. And never stop loving the addict. It's the drugs that we hate. Finally, we must never give up. My son today is at work. He's living his best life. And he gets home today, he'll see his girlfriend, and he'll play some video games. And the next generation, he's going to guard them and make sure they don't go down that addiction path. 